Today I'm going to walk you through an upgrade in OpenShift 4. And why this is important is because the process for upgrading between minor point releases and even major point releases in OpenShift 4 has dramatically improved over previous versions. So here I've logged into my OpenShift cluster using my GitHub authenticator and you can see that my cluster is at version 4.4.9 and what you're looking at here is I have the ability as an administrator to switch between different channels that Red Hat provides for streams. So there's a fast uh, and a stable channel, which most customers are going to run in one of those two. Now I'm sitting on the fast channel, but that was just to show you switching between them. We're going to go ahead and switch back to the stable channel and we're going to uh, click the upgrade. Now the only option for me is 4.4.10. And I'm going to go ahead and click that upgrade button. So it's literally, to kick this off, it's just the start of a button. Now you notice it's already showing a failing message there. If you've worked with Kubernetes at all in any shape or form, there's a lot of uh, fail until it works uh, type events if you really sit and watch things like a hawk. Um, but you can see in this case it started progressing again. So it was just a little health check there that, that failed for a second and then is uh, right back on the working. So the first thing it has to do is etcd. So it, this one actually takes a little bit. And what you'll see in this video is it actually took me about an hour and 15 minutes or so to, to accomplish this. But it wasn't really me doing anything. It was the cluster upgrading. And so it's really just me sitting there watching TV and uh, making sure that the screen recording is working and that uh, the cluster does what it's supposed to do. But as you can see, all of these are being uh, taken care of for me by the cluster upgrade process. And this is, this is because of the operator lifecycle manager. So all of the core cluster services are being managed by operators at this point. And the operators make it so that um, they can handle not only deployment of the initial service, but also um, updating it between versions. And you will see at some points certain services show in a degraded state, but don't be too concerned about that. Uh, definitely, you know, keep your eye on what is degraded and kind of what's happening. It also helps you learn through the process as to the order of operations. But all of this here is literally me doing nothing but watching. Um, I did speed up the process, like I said, so you'll see some of this in pretty fast motion. The other thing that's unique about this particular cluster is that the master nodes are virtual machines and the worker nodes are physical machines. And so you saw me a second ago kind of click over to the nodes screen and uh, what I'm particularly looking for now is throughout this process the worker nodes will reboot, the master nodes will reboot, but they do it in, a, in an order that doesn't uh, disrupt the service to the cluster, uh, or at least minimally disrupts service to the cluster. So that's what I was looking for there, is I was looking for scheduling to start being disabled on some of the nodes. So it'll do one master at a time, and it'll do one worker at a time. And what I have to do in this cluster, because these are physical machines, I just want to make sure that they reboot properly. Uh, I do have, these are super micro systems, and I do have a, a sort of wonky little issue on a couple of them where every once in a while in a reboot they will hang and that's not that's not actually a software issue uh, above the stack it's something that happens happens in post and uh, I found a few um, articles about people experience that same behavior but that's that's literally the only reason I'm even watching these things at all I would most of the time um, just click that button and uh, walk away and then <laughs> come back whenever I wanted to later and check it and it would be upgraded. So what you're seeing now is you're seeing the system, one of the systems, actually um, reboot. So this is my uh, Shadowbox 1 uh, worker node and you can see it's booting up the new version of CoreOS right now and as soon as that's up and live, what will happen is the services that need to be up and running. The OpenShift services that need to be up and running on this node will, will start up and as soon as they connect back to the cluster, um, OpenShift will move on to the next node. It'll make this one schedulable and move on to the next node and we'll see that in just a second. So now you see it's at that command prompt. We're back up. You can see the host name there. So 
um, you can see that I, I do have to actually re-authenticate here um, and that's just simply because of session timeout. Um, so now you can see it's uh, still scheduling disabled and what we'll see in a second is that SBX1 will become ready and after that it will move on to one of the other worker nodes so it moves on to SBX0 and you can see that my master 2 is actually not ready at all for use and that's because it is in the middle of uh, this same process. What's neat about that is that my API and my login and my applications are all up and running so when it's rebooting these nodes, Kubernetes is actually managing the movement of the pods that are, are running on there. So it's evacuating the nodes and making sure that um, they are not in use and that no applications are uh, at a loss of service. And so what we're going to do now is we're just going to kind of run through these different nodes and this, uh, this I'll speed up really quickly and just um, once, once they get going because there are uh, as you saw, there are six of these. So the rest of this video is very much just watching these nodes reboot and making sure they come online. I think it is important to know that uh, when I showed you earlier the, um, the channels, the reason I showed you switching between the channels, so when OpenShift 4.5 releases, I will have new channels available to me and the process for upgrading from 4.4 to 4.5 is actually very much the same as this process you've seen in this video um, for the minor update. And what you do is when you go into the uh, cluster settings, you change the channel from 4.4, whichever one you're on, stay or fast, to the 4.4, uh, sorry, 4.5 channel. And once you do that, you'll have the availability to pick a 4.5 point release to upgrade to. And uh, I recently did this, and I posted a link to uh, a link to a screenshot on LinkedIn. And I got a request actually to, hey, next time you do this, can you uh, can you record it? Now, what you're seeing is the update is actually done here. So we're at 4.4.10. But what's happening after that is this cluster is also running OpenShift container storage and it's running OpenShift virtualization. And so once the actual upgrade process is done, then the OCS or OpenShift container storage operator also kicks in, upgrades itself, and so does the OpenShift virtualization operator. So at this point, we have a healthy cluster. We've upgraded from 4.4.9 to 4.4.10. Appreciate your time um, and uh, definitely share this out to show others the improved upgrade process in OpenShift 4.